What's going on today? Internet Selfish here with Retrospect. And today I'm going to show you how I took an R36S and probably made it the most modded R36S on the planet. Coming out with my R36S Pro. I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's take a look. This is a project I've been working on since the day the R36S popped up online. And by R36S, I mean the orange R36S. A lot of this stuff wasn't made yet when the orange one popped up, though. So I've been slowly piecing things together over the last couple of months. And I've just given up on trying to wait for that Wi-Fi adapter that seems to never be showing up. But we're going to see what kind of cool improvements we can make here and make it look good. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. All right, now that we got some tools out, let's start pulling it apart. So there is some weird things on here. I don't know why. But we're not ever going to need this sticker again because this obviously is going to void the warranty. We're just going to take that bad boy off. I'm hoping my audio works a little better this time. I repositioned this new mic again, specifically a different position for this. So let's hope this works out a little bit better and I don't have to dub it over again. I'm sure I will. And actually, I'll just tell you now, I'm probably going to cut the audio halfway through and just dub parts of it anyways so that you guys don't have to listen to me talk to myself. All right. This seems like the way that I'm going to do this and scratch it up. So we're just going to take this part out here quick and take this stuff off with, without cutting all this stuff up. And these usually work pretty well if you just want to take it off. Something like that. We'll clean it up here once we get it off. But I'd say for the most part, we're looking pretty good there without actually scratching it. So I think that was important. There is our 64 gig card that came in for the operating system. And we have nothing on the other side. There was a 128 in there. I don't know what I did with it, but uh, it's gone. All right, let's get the back of this thing off here. There's only a few screws on here. I guess first we probably need to take the battery out. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Got my daughter to take a nap. She started crying right as I started recording. So I got her to take a nap and we can get this done. But I'm kind of trying to hurry myself, which I shouldn't be doing when I'm doing this. So just yell at me if you see me hurrying from all the way wherever you are. Oh, we need to take that sticker off yet too. That's okay. We can do that once we get this out. So we're going to go lefty Lucy. There should be six screws on here. Here. Oh crap, there goes my screws. Now what I'd recommend doing, unlike myself, is carefully putting all your screws in one place and make sure you have all your screws in one basket. Missing, oh there's one. And this guy here is stuck on the stupid sticker. I should have taken off right away. Again, the razor blade, not necessary. I usually use these because I can, I'll take them off and put them back on. These ones here are the really cheap ones, which work the best actually for the manufacturer side anyways, because they just fall apart. They stick very well. They got like a high concentration of glue and they just fall apart. Well, ain't that special. Our joysticks are going to be right up front. These should be real easy compared to some of the other joysticks we've done. So I think we might wait. We can just pull them out now, I guess. So first thing you're going to want to do is unplug them. And what you want to do to unplug them is just pull up this black tab on each one of these. And these are the same on all Joy-Cons, whether they be on Nintendo or anything else. It's just a little tab there you pull up and then you just unscrew them and they pop right out. And we're going to use a different screw head. <laughs> if you look on their website, it says use pretty much any size screwdriver that'll fit. And that's not usually how I do things. So we're going to try to find the right one. And that is the right one. Look at that. First guess. Look at me go. I'm on a roll today. All right, here we go. All right, and you do have to be a little bit careful with how tight things are just because it is in plastic. Oh, cool. These don't have those stupid things that the R35XXH has some little plastic stickers on there. And I got it halfway together and realized, oh crap, you can see light through there. If you haven't seen that video yet, I just did it last week sometime, I believe. Well, that is interesting. Okay, so that's our speaker. That's cool. Is that going to come out with everything, I wonder? Or are we just going to, because that just looks like it's taped in there. In the meantime, we're going to unplug it, just to unplug it. It is nice to see that they have a stamp now with their own name on it instead of somebody else's. Oddly enough, though, this is version 12. There's 12 versions, and this thing still doesn't have Wi-Fi. What in the hell is going on? That don't make no sense. Pull the rest of it apart. There's only a couple more screws, and she'll pop right off. If you're not jawjacking like me, this should probably only take you about 20, 25 minutes if you've done anything like this before. If not, it might take you a little bit longer, especially once we get into the back buttons. Those might take a little bit longer just because you don't want to break anything. But for the most part, this is a pretty straightforward little swap we got going on here. And I've actually she never pulled this device this far apart so i don't know how this board is held in here probably glued in or some stupid find out i bet you there's tabs there is oh right, yeah we're just gonna leave that speaker right there i think oh yeah and then we have our screen i didn't do it last time and people gave me a hard time so we'll do it there you go screen is off you feel better now and here are our membranes membranes i'm just checking this doesn't come with uh, the power or the volume rockers some of them do some of them don't i don't know what decides that and what doesn't but you know what these guys do such a good job at making buttons i don't even care so we're gonna lose those i'm sure they're not gonna stay where they are but that's okay all right so our d-pad um we'll just get that bad boy out of here and then we will get these buttons out of here real quick and one thing that really sucks about this the factory buttons and one thing you should do if you're not even going to do this mod is just open this up and cut this off. This is what I've done on mine in the past. Just cut that off or your buttons will float more freely. These buttons are actually poured a little differently. I don't know if we're going to be able to see on camera, but 
they actually from at least if they're like the last ones i did they're, they're gonna work better this is one of the first r36 is getting these buttons yeah see they float just slightly different so i'm hoping that they're gonna work better why does it make it easy to pull them out when you just gotta pull the whole shoot out right let's dump this stuff over here i have a feeling the thing's gonna take us the longest and don't quote me on this but i'm thinking it's gonna be the back butt by better because they're better back button okay now these don't have letters on them so it doesn't matter what order you put them in we're gonna find out if that is a thing between the middle and the center buttons all right so we're just gonna toss these things are right out of here is that working I knew i was gonna lose that you know let's put that one with it oh yeah this is gonna look sweet now secure did try to make me my other buttons in white and uh well i was kind of on a time crunch and uh i was just like it's been two months and i still haven't got this done yet we gotta get it done so they tried to do it quickly and were unsuccessful white is a harder color to work with i'm not sure what that all about because i don't do this stuff but i've always been told that white's a harder color so i've always tried to stick away from it but i think that it's going to be the right color for an orange device so i think it's going to look really nice on here didn't want to sacrifice that now here's the kicker i don't need any of these but boy did those fit in there nicely so that was fine now i've got some extras in case i need some more for the middle or whatever and because you guys know i like to put playstation buttons on things we have some custom r36 s PS buttons. Here does a really good job making these PlayStation buttons. I think that's why I keep buying the PlayStation ones. Now, I did just put a set, or I'm in the middle of putting a set of non-PlayStation ones on another device, which you guys will see soon. I'll post a picture up on my community tab once I get it done. I was actually just starting that when my white button showed up. Ooh, that does look nice. You guys are going to like that. That looks really good. Now, Secure doesn't want you to wipe ex directly on their buttons, which is somewhat understandable. Not something anybody else has ever told me, but my big thing is actually just cleaning up these membranes more than anything else, making sure that they are all nice and no stickiness. Now, again, this is brand new, so this should be just fine. This isn't a normal alcohol swab. It's actually an anti-adhesive one, so it just gets all the glues and stuff off. Don't need to do it, but I, I like doing it just because I like to know that everything's all clean when I put it all back together again. Now, what you want to do is get your four posts on here, just like they were when you, well, I guess they weren't when you pulled it off, so there's not a post on that side. Weird. Okay, get your three posts to line up, I guess. Yeah, this one doesn't have a post on the outside either. So we have everything in there. So that's looking pretty fancy. We can actually put that PCB back on here because now we are going to put the Hall Effect sticks in. So our next step will be the Hall Effect sticks. So we'll run this through. This is our speaker wire, which we will plug back in here in a minute. And then we also need to, probably more importantly, need to get through our screen. Now with this, just be careful with it. These things aren't as fragile as everybody wants to make them out to be, but you can break these ribbon cables relatively easily. So at the same time, they are fragile. And the thing is, they come straight. So they have to be bent at some point in time. As always, I do recommend you use some kind of ceramic or static-free tweezers. That way you don't get yourself all electrocuted and things. All right, that feels like she's in. Just make sure she's in all the way and pop her down, making sure everything's gonna line up and i'm looking to see where these little pins are because i never really even saw them it just kind of kind of happened so what you're going to do is you're going to push you have your usb c's and your audio right here and you can see it's going to fall flat without putting them in but it, you won't be able to reach them so you want to make sure that they are in where they need to be and then you can kind of back it out a little bit just to kind of figure out where everything fits and drop her in make sure everything's looking good kind of work around just make sure she's sunk all the way down and then we're going to take those two screws and wherever my screwdriver is Now, if you are having a hard time making contact with your buttons, you can back out these screws a little bit. It'll actually make the buttons work a little bit better. There's just not enough gap between them. How does that look? It would have been cool to have these in white, but that looks really good. Now, we just need to do some hall sticks. Let's get out our hall effect toy sticks and get her going. Now, let's see how the bends were on these things. Oh, yeah, they're pretty sharp on these ones, too. I don't know why they don't just come with that bend. It's almost in every one of them. I just straight jacked this set out of another device I was working on. I mean, I've got so many new ones, but I have another. I had a device that I was just using for parts that I had put hall effect sticks in at one point in time. I was like, I'm just going to steal these out of there. Now I'm thinking like, hmm, maybe I should have just grabbed one of the new new sets because this one here is uh, being kind of fussy. All right, I guess we're going to use a different pair. There we go. All right, one in, one more to go. Well, we should have a better idea how to do this this time, maybe. So what we're going to do is we are going to pull back, line her up, Oop. line her up. There we go. She's in. Boom. Oh, that was far easier than the first time. Let's get this last one in so we can be done. This is coming together nicely. As long as the screen works and everything else works, we're going to be good to go. Too bad you can't see where it says Gilly Kit through plastic here because it does look kind of neat on there. Okay. So now we got this. Now we just have to get the back done and that should be fairly easy. These ones actually look a little different than the Ambernick ones. These ones squeeze in. You do have to be a little bit careful because these are plastic tabs one side at a time. Left. To left, right, to so much less travel too. These should be quieter. Plastic just hit me right in the eye hole. There we go. Sweet. Look at them things, and they don't move very much. There's no clippies in here. It just it just screws on. Weird.
All right, we're all tightened up. Oh, less noise. Oh, all oh, these buttons, man. Boom. Oh, wait, we're not done yet. We need some condoms. Now we just got to make sure it powers up, and then we will do the operating system for you real quick. Our card back in here. This is our OS card. Yeah, one that was all taped shut and what have not. And the last thing to button her up is we do have a screen cover for her. So that's pretty neat. Make sure everything's working. So now we're going to go and we are going to do the operating system real quick. We know she powers up. We know things are working. Time to shut her down and we will get her rolling. Oh, I almost forgot something. We almost forgot something on the back. We're taking off this game console sticker. I'm over it. This is a totally unnecessary upgrade. If I didn't want people to not know this was an R36. It's not going to stick anymore when I'm done because I've been trying to get it on so many times. Oh, yeah. That's better. Now I can bring that out in public. All right, let's clean up our mess here real quick, and we will do the operating system, and then we will be done. All right, now that we get our area cleaned up, we just need to get our memory card set up. That's it. That's all we have left. Just a little memory card set up. Pretty easy stuff. So we're going to go over here to our web page, which is not the right web page. Hey, can I get a little assistance there, Retro Baby? Can you throw me on the right page? Thank you very much, Retro Baby. This is the page that we want to be on right here. I will throw a link down in my Thingamabob for you. That way you guys can just click on it and don't have to worry about it. In fact, I will have links to everything here today. Any of the mods that we did on the device itself, as well as any references that you need. I am writing up a guide for how to do the operating system portion too. Pretty easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But, you know, in case you are more of a visual learner, or I guess that wouldn't be visual. If you are more of a learner that needs to read instead of visual, cool. Yeah, do that. You know, that would be pretty nifty. I will have that set up there for you as well i don't know if it'll be quite ready when this video publishes but i will get it ready as soon as i possibly can and then i will just add the link in the description of this video you probably can figure this out from what i do anyway so we're on this page right here one interesting thing is that these are a break off of arc os and the break off is from the rg351 mp by ambernick they must have the closest in internals but that's fine i have noticed now coming in here today they have one for the r36s as well which was not in here last time i was in here now, you do have the ability to go through Google Drive, or you can do Mediafire or Mega Drive. If you don't have a subscription to this Mediafire or Mega Drive account, though, you may be restricted on how much you can download. This being because they restrict the amount of gigs you can download in a certain specific amount of time. Now, that being said, the caveat is you have to trust Google Drive. So if you don't have virus protection or you get a little sketched out about doing stuff, then this might not be the option for you. If you're going to go into here, it's going to go directly to a Google Drive account and it's just going to say there's no preview available. Then you go and it's going to tell you that it can't scan it for viruses. Do it at your own risk, your own peril. I trust it, so I'm going to download it. So I'm just going to hit download anyways, no big deal. And then once it's downloading, we are going to close this window down and we are going to open up our download folder. Now, I'm just going to put this on the desktop, honestly. We're just going to make this really easy for you guys to kind of see what's going on. And we're right click on it and we are going to go to more options and we are going to go to 7-Zip and extract here. If you don't have 7-Zip, I'd recommend downloading it. There is a link to that down on my Thingamabob as well. So any of the stuff here will be available down there in my Thingamabob. So the reason why we have a 32 gig card, which you actually only need a 16 for this but i just have a box full of these 32 so use this we're going to put the operating system on this one and on the 128 we're going to put our games on now you're going to have to have your own roms and things like that by doing it this way i would still recommend replacing that card that came in it and just drag and drop it onto this card because that other card is prone to failure if you do any kind of modifications like add subtract stuff like that that's when you start to have issues with those cards they're fine out of the box as long as you don't modify them at all and that includes your save states and things like that you want to save a game i would probably recommend just getting a new memory card i don't have a deal with any memory card company but um, i do a lot of team group cards and i do a lot of sps sp cards work really well and then obviously your samsung's and your sandisk they're all kind of rated relatively similar uh the sps and the team group ones are rated a little less than the sandisk and the samsung's but i've actually in my own experience we've had more samsung and sandisk cards go to crap granted those are usually when they're closer to a terabyte or more all right now we should have this yep, image file right here on our desktop Top. Now that we have that, we're going to go into our Rufus tool. If you don't have Rufus already, again, link down on my Thingamabob. Rufus is a good way just to write things to a card for yourself. So we're going to go in here. We're going to choose our drive letter. I haven't put the card in yet. That's right. So we need to do that. So we are going to put our card into our card reader. Probably need to exit Rufus. But, uh, yeah, I do. We're going to close Rufus and we're going to put our card into our card reader. Now, if you don't have a card reader, there's plenty of them out there. I'm actually using an anchor dock right now uh, just because I'm testing out a mini PC. I just happen to have that on there. So this should now, if we go into here, show our card. So that must be E drive. So E drive, it's empty. Awesome. Good to see. Now we're going to go into Rufus and then we are going to select that E drive. So it already did. 
right? You want to make sure it's the right drive because you could rewrite your hard drive if you chose the wrong drive. This is only giving us external as an option. That is one nice thing about some computers. Some though do actually give you the option for your internals. Now we're going to select that folder. We put that right onto our desktop and it is an image folder, Arc OS R35S and R36S version 2. We're going to put that on there. I've actually not run version 2 yet. I think I'm on, uh, maybe I have, I don't know. And we're going to hit start. And then this thing is going to do what this thing does. And this takes just a few minutes. Uh, because it is a new card, it won't take real long because the first part of this is deleting partitions. So if you don't have partitions, not a big deal. We'll let this run here for a minute and then we will come back to it. All right, now that that's done, we are going to close this. So it doesn't actually really tell you. If you have your audio turned on, it does make a beeping noise, but I mean, who's going to hear that over everything else that's going on in the world? So we're just going to close that down real quick. And okay, now we have it on there. We'll just double check to see what it looks like. It should have named the drive as well. Boot, so there it is. We got boot and all that fun, happy stuff. So now that we have the boot drive ready, we're going to go down here and we are going to eject it. Now we have our card. So we are going to put our card in here and fire her up. Now, again, if you haven't. What? Oh, I got the old card. What is in here? If you haven't yet set up your 128 or whatever card it is that you're going to use for your normal card. I mean, you can use any size. It doesn't matter. Uh, make sure that you run that with this. So what I would do is start this up, turn it over, shut it down, put the new card in, start it back up. All right. So we are going to fire this up, make sure it is all working. And then we are going to put a game card into it. And we don't need this card anymore. That just goes in the trash. No big deal. As you see, it's going to do some install stuff when you first do this. That's just how it is on any of these with the first install. And this is where we're crossing our fingers that everything works out good. This is actually a completely different version of this build than I was using before. So I'm pretty excited to see something new. All right, so complete expansion of Easy ROM partition and convert over to XBAT. This system will now reboot and load Arc OS. So now it is going to reboot and actually put the full operating system on because it created all the partitions it needed to. Well, that's a cool load screen compared. I mean, I like the last one too, I guess, but it looks nice. All right, and it doesn't really come with any games on it. That part's going to be a little dry, but we are just going to reboot it right away. And we are going to take that game card and put it in here. Game card was taking too long to load, so I actually just stole it out of the white one. I got a Samsung card here now. And while that's loading, just for the sake of filming, I just wanted to get this thing up and running for you. So now that one's naked over there with no game card in it. Insert coin, loading file. Now this will be your second longest boot now that we're putting the game card in because now this has to read through your game card and its structure and all that stuff. And that wasn't too bad. So now you don't see anything on here still. So you are going to go under options here and we are going to go under advanced. And at the bottom here, we're going to switch to S2D ROMs. So this will switch over which card it's reading the ROMs off of. Again, you could just put the one card in the one side and put all your ROMs on one side and never have to worry about a second card. I just like the ability to switch OSs a lot, which is the biggest advantage of running two cards. If you're only going to be running one operating system, you look at like the Mio Minis and stuff, they don't come with two cards. Six are still working. We're going to take a look at a couple of games here just to make sure that everything's working out all right. And then we will uh, be done for today. Oh, we do need to do one other thing. I had ordered multiple times the Wi-Fi adapter out of the RJ353V. It never showed up anytime that I tried to order it and now I can't find one that's available. So we will do that project whenever that becomes available and put an internal Wi-Fi card in here. That being said, I created a solution temporary. I know that people have been hooking these to their phones and nobody can figure out which Wi-Fi adapters to put on these devices in order to make them work. I don't remember where I got this one, but I will try to figure it out. And if I can, I'll link it down below. But this specific Wi-Fi adapter, this USB Wi-Fi Int, which is probably a pretty common model number, honestly. I don't know if any of this will help you, but if it does, take us screenshot or whatever this card actually does work in it and i know after going through over half a dozen cards that this one is the one to get at least for it working on here i do not believe this one is wi-fi 6 i can't remember some of the cards i have are wi-fi 6 which is why i was assuming they weren't working but with this bad boy uh, i just got one of these little guys here so we're just gonna put this bad boy in here here's our wi-fi card with our adapter now we're gonna put these into the otg port which is the port on the right the nice thing about these l-shaped ones is that it sits more flat so now we're gonna go back underneath that options menu so now we're back underneath this options menu and we need to go and we need to activate this okay. and i'm not going to show you what we activate to so hold on makes that nice crackly noise while it's trying to connect to your wi-fi this device activated successfully scanning for access points so now we're going to go back out of here and we are going to start select that'll exit us out of the screen now that we have the ability to do things with this that we didn't before 
like update over the air, which is an option on here. There shouldn't be an update available because I just did it. I'm sure there's not, but you know what? We're going to find out anyways. I don't like that crackling noise it makes every time you sign on, but yep, no updates available because we just did the latest update while we're doing this. You can do things like sync thing where you can sync your saves and everything, which I use religiously because I have so many devices, it saves between them. But on top of that, you can also do things like achievements in RetroArch. And this does give you standalone access to RetroArch with this operating system. So if you wanted to go in and set it up so you get your achievements, you can just go down here to achievements in RetroArch and you can activate those achievements. You want to add me on there to your playlist or whatever. I'm selfish on RetroArch. You're going to see a lot of games with one star as I do demos of games I've never tried before just to have demos out there. I'm going to keep my password to myself. Also, if you've been using retro achievements for a while and you go into hardcore mode and you play the same games, it kind of screws them up. So I will just do that. I just do the unlock sound. Uh, if you want encore mode on the bottom here, it'll just continue to tell you every time you beat the same things over and over again. So you feel all good and happy and stuff. Now in here, you're going to want to go to your configuration file and save your configuration. That way it'll say your retro arc login. Now, if you don't have a retro arc account, you just want to go to their website and you want to register yourself an account because achievements are cool. And if you don't like achievements, then whatever. What do we want to try today? PlayStation. We're going to quickly jump in the BIOS here and we are going to change those controller settings. These ones look like they registered, right? There we go. All right, let's make sure it all works now. Look at that. And that is the difference between having things set up correctly or incorrectly right there. Everything's working now. Word. Cool. So that just gives you a little quick peek of the setup I got here for the R36. S. This is about as uh, most modded as you can get it. Minus, I know you can put a Wi-Fi card in here, though people have been putting the wrong one in. They keep trying to dremel out a space for it. You should just be able to put the Wi-Fi card in off the RG353V and VS. So I just need to get a hold of one, and I just haven't been able to get one. But here we got a little, you know, sticker mod. Woo, adds horsepower. We got our better back buttons. I was going to do a battery mod, but really there's not a whole lot of need for it on this. The battery life is pretty decent. We did get a D-pad and some face buttons here from Cloud Life 6. And then we got some secure mod PlayStation buttons. We also have our hall sticks in here, which are pretty fantastic. And then I am running a Wi-Fi adapter. Don't need to do this. Not necessary. But I think for the weigh-in, I think we need to keep the Wi-Fi adapter on because we are going to be apples to apples. On that one, I will take off the magnet plug for USB charging. But other than that, that is where we're going to be. So there's our magnet plug for USB charging. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it is still heavier. I'm not sure. We're going to find out. So gram wise. RG353V is 197 grams wet. So let's see what we got here on the R36S, quote unquote, Pro. 214 grams. And these both have better back buttons, same kind of stuff on them, right? So they're built the same, same hall sticks, everything else. So let's pull off this. We're going to do a comparison against the original before modification. So it's 197 pounds wet without the expansion of the Wi-Fi. And an original R36S feels a little lighter, 187 grams. Did I say pounds this whole time? 187 grams. So we are adding a significant amount of weight to it at about 10 grams, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're under 200 grams, it is kind of a lot. These two are exactly the same now, which have the exact same modifications. So it's safe to say that, that these modifications weigh about 10 grams. I'm sure they'll be lighter than the right -right pocket flip by quite a bit. This is one of my favorite devices. It's just easily pocketable. 278. They do actually weigh less than the RP2. And then we'll put it up here against the popular but not much purchased Ambernick Arc, which I think that this device needs a little bit more love, but 260 grams on that bad boy. Hit me up in the comments down below. I'm pretty sure I did build the world's most expensive R36S. I just, I couldn't stop putting parts on it. I know there are a couple more. Like I said, I am waiting on some other stuff. So we'll probably do a different video to update. We'll do a Pro 2 version of the R36S. But this actually feels like a premium handset now to use and play. It's not so creaky. The buttons are a lot quieter. If you want to see me keep doing videos like this where I'm taking devices and rebuilding them, please let me know down in the comment section below. And if there's a specific device you want me to do, also leave that in the comment section below. The reason why I got this bad boy done when I did is I was already planning it for a couple of months, waiting for parts. I did a survey and this was literally the the top decided device that people wanted me to do so i just kind of pushed it up in my timetable want to make sure we got it out there so there are a couple other devices that were literally within a vote so i am trying to see what kind of parts i can find for those right now we'll probably do another vote here once we get a little closer to what i know i can and cannot get for parts i do also have a couple devices on the way with parts so we will do some more videos like that if you guys like seeing those if you haven't seen one of these videos before i do have a few on the channel most notably in recent history is the video on the rg35xx H Pro that I did. Very similar upgrades to the modifications I did on this one. A little different software. Some other things are a little bit different as well, but very similar. They kind of fit in that same mold. Until we come out with some more parts and things, it's going to be difficult to put anything else on these. These are some of the first buttons for the R36S from Cloud Life 6 and as well as from Better Back Button. I'm not sure about secure mods. I haven't seen them out there, but I'm sure that people have bought them before. I can't be the first one. I really do enjoy building these devices for you guys, mostly just so you guys can see how these things come together and 
can get torn apart. I was going to do one here for the 33S, but nobody seems to be picking that one up. So if people start picking it up, maybe I'll get a video out for that. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to comment, like, and share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel. And I'm more of a grower than a shower. Just ask my wife. She just left the room though. So maybe, maybe ask her next time she's here. Also, why don't you go check out one of these other videos that it's telling you to check out because Google's usually not wrong and it's telling you one of these two videos here at the end is something you're going to be into. I didn't pick the videos. Google did. So take a look at one of those. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.